Welcome to Wild Wednesday. And here we go. As you would expect entering a wooded area in Missouri from a large patch of canary reed grass trailing into it. Leading up to a willow tree. As much as this looks like perhaps a man-made path, I think this is actually a small creek path. Mushroom. It's not a path made by people or animals, but a path cut by Pooling water and streaming water and eroding water erodes the soil, taking up the plants that would grow in the path. Hmm. Let's go around the debris here. See if we can stay on this water path. That was a dead branch. But hey, rose hips. They don't feel quite ripe. We're getting into fall here in Missouri, in case you can't tell from the leaf color variety scattered on the ground. And in the trees above me, that yellow tint coming into the green. Now, I admit it, that sunny wooded area up there reminds you of that scene in the beginning of Lord of the Rings where Frodo is reading as Gandalf's wagon first arrives in town. Admit it. This is very interesting. To me, I mean, uh, 
This is a large clearing. The access isn't too far of a trip from the edge of the woods. And as long as the season isn't too wet, this area could be useful ritualistically, you know? Hmm. Well, easy to remember and make it back to. Worth noting. These mounds, by the way, are not natural. If you look close, you'll see metal fence posts stuck into the ground here. These mounds are leftovers from fence clearing and possibly clearing other parts of whatever small farm was here before the land was purchased and cropped. Cropped, I mean, they strip it down to just dirt, till it, and plant crops on it. These mounds are no doubt leftovers from that process. You'll notice that the forest is mostly devoid of those mounds. They're here along the edge. because it was easier for a small tractor to push those debris to the edge, no doubt. And of course, many of the trees you're looking at, I would estimate are younger than 50. Some maybe even younger than 30, which means this area could have looked much, much different just, just 30 to 50 years ago. The home that was here that had those fences could have been anywhere. What was that? Looked like maybe a vole. This is interesting. What are you? Fresh, but this is not an oyster mushroom. This has a definitive and clear stalk. So I'm going to leave it alone. I don't eat too many mushrooms that have clear stalks on them. Especially if you're an amateur, I would just recommend avoiding foraging mushrooms with stalks. In the case of a misidentification, it could be disastrous. With mushrooms like puffballs, pheasant's back, hen of the woods, they morels. Morels do have a stalk, but if you ever see a morel mushroom up close in person, especially fresh, you'll know what I mean when I say the stalk on them is irrelevant. You can't mistake them. But yeah, this is fall if you live in a temperate area. The day after a rain. Take a walk in the woods, even if it's just a small conservation area near you. You're very likely, the day after a rain, 12 to 24 hours, to find a large number of 
wild mushrooms racing to grow. You can see there's even some old white shelf mushroom growing in here. And some more up top, a type of orange mushroom. Hmm. Old enough that I can't place it. Orange mushrooms are always interesting because there's a few neat things they could be. They could be jack-o'-lantern mushrooms that, uh, if you've seen pictures of mushrooms that are bioluminescent or rather glow in the dark online, that might have been what you were looking at. I've never actually caught sight of them myself in person. Um, they could be Gymnopolis hallucinogenic mushrooms, which I also don't believe I've ever actually seen in person. But since it's been a while, since our last rain, I didn't expect to run into very many mushrooms. If you can all hear a slight hum, it's because this is harvesting season. So everybody nearby with a cornfield is harvesting it. They're still waiting a little while on soybean fields, so not everything is out of the field yet, and that's why you still hear the occasional tractor. Really distinct animal trail going down into the creek right there. Trying to make sure I distinctly sort of really blatantly get the camera on the things that I mention or point at. I have a tendency to point at things or mention them and not get the camera on them since I don't have a viewfinder readily with an action camera on my head. So feel free in the comments to let me know if I'm screwing that up or doing a good job of it. I've been here before to these woods on, on several occasions, quite a few occasions, but where I haven't been is across the creek here on very many occasions. But of course nature makes its bridges as you can see. I think this is the one we will try to use. We're good. Hmm, I don't know. This one could break on us. It is very You can hear it crackling under my weight. For example, ah, there we go, there's part of our bridge. But that's just the bark. We could be, we could still be dealing with a very sturdy log here.
Besides, it's only five or six feet off the ground. We'd be okay. even down here, sadly. Bits and pieces like that get pushed downstream when the rains come by, just by the flow of the water and then of course there's no chance of anybody picking them up at that point since they're so far out in the woods. That not this thing in my hand. This is a rather large Osage orange ball. But that post there gives away that... Yeah, and there's a little more wood and some old barbed wire. And that tells us that there used to be, at the very least, more of a farm here and possibly a home. And while the Osage orange trees in Missouri do sometimes just grow on their own, that one is enormous. They more often than not represent old fence rows. What that means is that this area might have more history than we expect. If you are a metal detectorist, those sort of old fence posts are definitely something to keep an eye out for. If this is your first Wild Wednesday, that's interesting. This appears to be the remains of a chopped stump. The cut is smooth, it's not a regular tree that fell down or decayed. A scenic view of the creek. If this is your first Wild Wednesday, the concept is to get out somewhere that people don't go very often and look for something people don't see very often, such as rare animals. And by rare, I mean really rare, such as possibly mythical or legendary. Things like the fabled unicorn, things like the mythological goblin. Now, this is interesting too. Uh, I cannot shove that log over. Welcome back. There was a bit of a battery malfunction, as in it was dead. So you'll notice the location is significantly different. We're no longer in a wooded area by a creek. We are by a creek and a somewhat wooded area, a wood line this time, not a legitimate chunk of forest. Walnuts. But if you do watch the Wild Wednesdays, you might somewhat recognize this location from what well, was the first uh, at night uh, Wild Wednesday that I uploaded not too long ago with the lightning in the background. Um, this is almost exactly where I was for parts of that video, but of course this is in broad daylight. I jumped over to here because I had to run home to get a partially charged battery 
and hope that it lasts another 25 or so minutes. I think the reason they were getting drained so fast is because I might have accidentally turned on the GPS function on the camera, which saps the battery life very quickly. It takes a lot of juice. That is a nice big walnut. If you have walnut trees, black walnut trees in your area, I highly recommend the scent of, of black walnut. I personally I think it's awesome. And if you just carry one with you for a little while, squeeze it in your hand. For a large chunk of the rest of the day, your hands will smell like black walnuts, which is great. Don't judge me. So I'm thinking when we get to the curve up here, we can go into the wood line. What do you guys think? Good point, good point. Yeah, I agree. If you're curious or you're not familiar with them for some reason, walnuts like this are entirely edible. Well, not entirely, as in this whole thing. The nut inside has nut meat in it that is edible and is the typical walnut that you see on store shelves, that sort of thing, maybe in baked goods and some cereals. In Missouri, they're so common that you can really pick them up off the side of the road or the side of a crop field like this, for example. But there is a small distinction. These are black walnut. Most walnuts that people end up eating, buying at stores and such, are English walnuts that are known for having a softer shell. This green stuff you see right there. That's the husk. Inside is a hard shell. And inside that is the actual nut meat. The part you consume. But black walnuts, <laughs> while the tree is famous for its wood, and a lot of... I've heard that some people even poach the trees going on to people's properties and cutting them down in the night. Or you bring a trailer or a four-wheeler, dragging the tree out to the road, loading it, stealing it, and selling it for the wood. But the black walnut itself, the actual nut inside the husk, is known for having a much more durable shell than the English walnut. So much so that black walnuts are very unpopular. And it's sad, but... Uh, a lot of black walnut just goes to waste. You can actually go on Craigslist in Missouri, and I imagine some other states as well, of course, and find people saying, come get these walnuts out of my yard. They get shot everywhere by my lawnmower blades when I try to mow, that sort of thing. So come pick them up for free. You can have them. Just because they are so, so much of a pain to crack. It takes a very heavy duty walnut cracker.
I'm curious to check out that chunk of woods. Trees. So we'll go in straight ahead. See what we run into. Hopefully something interesting. I think the part that got cut off earlier, I was just showing, uh, drawing attention to a piece of a tree that was on the ground and had some evidence of having been burnt. I think that's where it was when I heard the battery. Well, the camera gave me the alert that it's shutting off. I hear a dog in the distance, but I'm actually not familiar with any dogs that live nearby. Hmm, a little dense in there. Not too dense to get through, but is it worth it for how much it's going to cut back on us? Let's find out. No, damn it, it wasn't worth it for how it's going to cut back on us. You can see that this little creek curves around to right there, leaving us no real ledge to walk on. Wow, that's a big pipe. I swear if somebody posts that's what she said, I'm going to ban to just comment deleted ban. I'm kidding, of course, I don't. Delete any comments or ban any commenters. What is the best route here? Hmm. Well, I definitely want to check out that chunk of trees up there. But with a pipe, it suggests that the creek doesn't really run too far up there. So we shouldn't have to jump across again, even if I go over this and up onto the hill there. So let's try to go down here without slipping and falling several times. That actually feels pretty sturdy. Let's very fresh, maybe raccoon or possum scat. Hmm. Nothing in there of note. At least not as far as we can see.
And there's the other side of that pipe. And yeah, looks like nothing in there. We have more light from this angle. Evidence of habitation at some point. You can see in the distance out there somebody's tractor equipment in the field next to this wood line. Yeah, barely through the trees there. Well, as is standard in the area, you can see right here, this was a property border at some point because they planted a row of Osage Orange trees and ran a fence along it. No longer used, just running through a tree line with no apparent purpose. you can still see the evidence of it. Honestly, I would say if you live in the Midwest, especially the Missouri area, and anytime you see more than a few of these, if you're a metal detectorist, get your metal detector out. These could be a sure sign of people once having lived there between 50 and even a hundred years ago. Come on, rose bushes. I'm trying to catch you some slack here. You're not making it easy. What is that? Hmm. 
just some piece of farm equipment maybe or an old oven that someone dumped in their field. Common around these parts. Oh, come on, rose bushes. Thorns. Thorns everywhere. I think we're getting close to that chunk of woods I was curious about. looks like we're approaching the edging of a man-made pond. Hey -o. puff balls. These are past ripe phase. But puff balls nonetheless. As you can see, they've gone past edible. Still might not be a bad spot to come after the next few rains. There could be more batches growing there. Fungus. Fungi. It is a small pond. Fungi are usually very predictable in regards to when they sprout because they're so moisture dependent. You can just return to where you found it once. after the next rain and very often find new growth, fresh growth. Sorry if the light off of the water is blinding everyone. Let's circle the pond. It might be easier to do if we just dodge out a bit. Or not, we might have an animal trail we can use without having to actually jump all the way out of the wood line. Come on, get off me.
getting a little short on the animal trail here. So I'm just going to duck out to finish this circle. <sighs> Something just went through my shoe into my foot a little bit. Not deep, so I'm okay, but uh, for a moment there, I was pretty sure I landed on nail. I can hear the frogs running away from here, making their signature meep, and then hopping in the water. Interestingly large oak jutting out over the water. A very soft bank. Hmm. Well, what do you guys think? Further up? This is a nice clearing bordering a line of Osage orange trees again, the same fence row from before. And you can see how easy it was to just wrap a tree with the wire you were using. And the trees would eventually solidify your fence just eating into it. Oh, this is very fresh. This Osage orange has been lacerated open and eaten around the core 
to get to these. This here, which is a seed from within an Osage orange. You can see the squirrel that did it is very good at his job. He only left a very few seeds. And here you can see where he actually opened it up and ate just the kernel out of the seed, the seed husk. Enormous, though, these trees definitely had a good year. And this trail is no doubt the trail the squirrel, or I assume squirrel, uses to get back and forth to the water. More Osage orange balls around this tree here and just further out to the north is a row of oaks. So, pretty sweet pad for a squirrel. And heck, there's even this barbed wire fence left over from ages ago that I'm sure the squirrel can kinda utilize to avoid predators on the ground since a squirrel could duck right under the fence, through the fence, and larger predators, like a coyote, could have trouble getting through there. Bird, please. Please, bird. I'm trying to record a video for YouTube, bird, please. How about we jump over the gap in the fence? Which the tree has provided. Hmm. Yeah, this row of oaks was also certainly planted as an old fence row. Not often, not as often did they do oak as far as I've seen. But you can see from the fencing and the post that this was their property border and they're lined up too well to just be coincidence. Ah. So, there's a potion brewing in my backpack and that potion turns off the camera when you drink it. No, that doesn't work very well. Cheesy, but doesn't make a lot of sense. Basically, that noise means that we've been at this for about an hour. <laughs> Technically split up into two parts. But what I do after we've been at this for a while is head back without the camera on. The reason for that is to entertain the possibility that the kind of creatures we're looking for, fairies, goblins, mythical creatures, maybe they can sense cameras, maybe they can tell when a camera is on or when they have a chance of being recorded, so they can completely, 100% guaranteed, avoid it. Entertaining that possibility, I do the return trip without the camera. That means afterwards I fire it back up and let you guys know what I saw and you only have my testimony. I hope that's good enough and I will see you guys and gals in about 35-40 minutes for the return trip. Alright, we are out. As you can see, I didn't notice anything strange on the return trip. Nothing unusual, nothing out of the ordinary. Hopefully you guys thought the trip itself was cool. Uh, saw some interesting things. Didn't mind the interruption. 
And if you dig this sort of thing, there'll be a subscribe button in one of the corners. This is YouTube, you know how to like a video if you like this sort of thing. And uh, thanks. Feel free to leave any ideas, suggestions, or critiques in the comments section below. I'll definitely read them. See you guys next time.